Hello, welcome to Ginge Ginge. Now today I'm going to be doing a video on my new camera setup. So it's my first video of 2022 and I could have just jumped in with something else to do but I wanted to start with this just because I'm hoping this is going to add like a, a huge amount of uh, quality to the videos basically. So I'm still using the same camera so the camera I use is a Canon M50. I, I picked this camera because it's sort of like a it's a, it's a mid-range camera, but it's sort of a, an all-round camera. So it's good at taking pictures, uh, it's good for video, you can get decent slow-mos on it, things like that. Um, and it also comes with like an adapter. You can buy a little adapter, I can't what it's called now, but you can attach that to the camera. So you can pretty much use any lens available for this one camera, which is really good. And the actual adapter actually makes the camera a little bit sharper, uh, makes the video a little bit more crisp, a little bit more clear. So that's something I will be getting for in the future. But as you can see, I'm not holding the camera for once. I'm not shaking the camera around and having to change arms because my, my shoulders are dying. It's because I finally invested in like a, I'll say a proper setup, but I finally got myself a, a decent tripod that I can use. And it goes from all the way down to like sort of one and a half foot to like nearly six foot. So it's absolutely brilliant. It's got all the tilts and everything on it. So that's ideal. Um, I've also got a new uh, microphone for the camera. Um, I'll show you that once we get into the video a little bit more, but I've got a new microphone for the camera So hopefully the audio is going to be a little bit better I'm not sure if it's going to pick up everything else in the room because um, so I've got a radiator in the corner there clicking I've got a filtration uh, Box there that's going. I've also got a little trickle coming from the big saltwater pond over here So I'm not sure how the audio is going to come out But I'm hoping it is going to be better than literally just using the the inside mic of the camera so I've done a little bit of extra messing about with this, as you know, if you watch my channel, I'm a bit of a tart, I like to change things and do my own thing. Um, I've made a custom mount for my bring light, um, and that's basically all this video is going to be about. I'll show you the whole setup I've got, but the main part of this video is just the 3D printed part that I've made, which holds the ring light. So the ring light is actually attached to the camera, and it's not sort of mounted up high, it literally goes around the camera lens. And I wanted that so that whenever I'm filming, I don't have to mess about trying to direct light and get shadows and things like that. The light is literally coming straight from the lens. So yeah, hopefully it makes a difference. It looks better on the camera. I'm looking at the little uh, little screen on the camera now and it, it looks 10 times better just with that small amount of light. Um, but if you've seen this, this is what I used to use. Uh, this is like a little, I don't even know what brand it is, a little Joby pod, I think it's called. So I used to do all my filming with this little tiny little pod. Now I could probably get away with it because my camera is so small and lightweight, I could probably have got away with this. Um, anything bigger, I don't think this would have been able to, to handle it, but I was literally holding this at arm's length with the camera mounted on top, and that's how I used to do a lot of my recordings. Uh, same thing if you've seen my camera propped up in certain places, I'd extend these little legs out, and the camera would just be propped up on there, or I've been doing some dodgy stuff like the rack I've got to my right here. I used to <laughs> dodgily, when I was doing filming for the pond and filling it up, I would have the camera attached on the end here. I'd have that on top of the rack and I'd have something heavy holding that so the camera was dangling and yeah, it was proper dodgy. But now I've got the tripod, uh, it should make all my filming a lot better, a lot more easier. Um, I'm hoping to get a couple of new cameras or not big proper cameras, like sort of GoPro type cameras just so I can get different angles and things like that. So it should make a lot of the video a lot better. So yeah, hopefully this has all come out all right. Um, I'm gonna jump straight into the actual parts that I've been making. I've 3D printed two parts. One of them is probably the main part. The other one is just like a little accessory just to make screwing a, a bolt in a bit easier, basically. But what I'll do is I'll get this all sort of uh, broken down a little bit so I can film it. I'll film this. I'm gonna have to film this on my iPad, so I don't know how that quality is gonna come out. But it's just so I can give you like a little look at how I'm, I'm doing everything basically. So yeah, it's so nice not having to hold the camera. It makes it so much better. Okay, so I'm filming this on my iPad and it feels weird. This is like one of those, I don't know how big it is, but it's an iPad Pro, so it's pretty big. <laughs> Trying to hold this up and film with it is, yeah, very weird. But as you can see, this is uh, my new setup. So, oh God, this is really wobbly. So I'm not going to go into the whole setup of what microphone I've got and what stand this is and what light ring this is. If you want to know that, then let me know and I can do a full video breakdown on everything I've got. This is the only mic that I've found, which is half I did buy one of those, um, oh, I can't work on that. They're called those shotgun uh, types of mics. Um, that basically, it was one of the road ones. The one I got was absolutely crap. It didn't record the audio. It sounded like there was a bloody bee inside the mic just buzzing constantly. So I went for this one, which is like the, the micro version of that. 
um, and yeah this is so far it's it's been bang on um, but yeah so as you can see that's the microphone that just mounts to the top of the camera uh, this is my Canon 50 so you can see it's quite a small camera and then I've got the stand so this is the ring light I've bought, it's only a small ring light, it only doesn't need to be too big but you can see that orange part, that is the piece that I've 3D printed. So that's what actually holds the uh, ring light in place, as you can see, and it actually mounts to the bottom of the camera and that actually goes to the, the little piece which sits um, inside the mount here and then you can actually take this whole piece out and hold the camera if you need to. I'll probably be 3D printing a new uh, attachment piece for this to go to here just so that once I take it off here I can then quickly attach it to like a little uh, tripod sort of thing so I can hand vlog with it as well so um, that'll be something else I'll be designing next but yeah you can see that's where the ring light sits and it's perfect I can still get into there I can reach this from the side and I can still zoom in and out of the lens if I need to um, yes it's not too bad so this is one of the um, parts I've printed. This is the, the final part I tested. Basically, I wanted to make sure it was perfect, make sure everything fit perfectly and things like that. So this is the third design I come up with. I've got two other designs here. <coughs> As you can see, this was the, the second one. This was the first one. You can see I didn't make a groove there for the where this wire comes out the back of the ring light. This was pushing against the wire, this part here, so I had to cut that little groove out just to make sure that would sit there and not damage the wire basically. But yeah, you can see how it all works. And I did have these little locator pins that I 3D printed on. Um, you're probably not gonna see them, just where my little pinky is. I had them on there as well, just cause there are two little holes underneath here. And I sort of put them on as a beginning just to hold it in place. But then you can see on this one, I actually 3D printed like a little ridge at the front just to hold the front on. So in the end, I didn't really need them two locator pins. So I got rid of them. And uh, yeah, so that is basically the whole setup. So I've got a couple of bits I've printed. <clears throat> Underneath here, you can see there's like this little nut. So this screws into this ring light and trying to do this hand tight is annoying really, really hard. So all I did was I 3D printed like a, a little wing nut basically. So I'm just gonna super glue that onto there and that's just gonna make tightening and unscrewing that a little bit easier. And then here, we have the, the main part, I've printed it in black, just so that it matches the rest of the gun. Like, this camera is terrible. Apple's supposed to have really good cameras, I think they're absolutely rubbish. Um, but yeah, anyway, this is the part that I find printed. You can see I've added a little piece on the back there, just for like added support to take the weight of the camera, but this does feel absolutely solid. There's a little bit of clean up I've got to do on it, just like a few little loose ends I need to get rid of, but I'm gonna do all that on camera anyway. And I wanna make these holes here just a little bit bigger because when I'm putting the the bolts through to attach it to the camera they're just a little bit snug and to be honest I'm not too worried about this being a screw thread um, so I am going to basically drill these out make them a little bit bigger but yeah that is going to be the final piece to replace that orange bit I think it's going to look really good so I don't really know much about cameras um, I've got a rough idea of what I'm doing but having this tripod like I said is an absolute lifesaver so you can see that's and the screen's just gone off, brilliant. But you can see, that's what I'm filming at the minute. Um, and for me to do this, I would have had to drill something into the wall and balance the camera on it, or I would have put like two boxes up here and a thing across and then had the camera pointing down. So yeah, it's an absolute lifesaver. But you can see, I, I don't know if I'm using the tripod properly or how you're supposed to use it, but I've got one leg, which is really short, stabilize it on there. And then I've got the other two legs using them as you normally would. So. Whether that's how you're supposed to use it, I don't know, but if it works, then it's not as stupid, is it? So yeah, this is how I'm gonna be filming the next bit. So hopefully this is all gonna come out. Hopefully the uh, the camera's not gonna blur anything. Hopefully you can see everything. So I did watch back on the video. I know the camera is sort of struggling to focus on my face, but I think it's because it's, it's trying to focus on everything basically around me. So um, if I zoomed in a little bit, I think it would've been fine, but we'll, we'll lay it off. So yeah, this is what I'm basically aiming for. So this is what goes into the bottom of the camera. Um, the little attachment that goes onto the camera goes underneath this and then this goes straight into the camera. Now I did have to order a custom uh, bolt for this bot, uh, for this bottom piece, yeah. Um, this is just one, this one I have that I was using, it just isn't long enough to go into the, the ring light, so this is going to be no good. So I ordered uh, a bolt for this, um, 
and it didn't have this bit on it. I just couldn't get one the same size that I needed that had this little loop which helps you twist basically. I just couldn't find it. So it's just a normal bolt that I put in and then I needed to order another one which is even longer for this and luckily it, it does have that. I've got off Amazon, next day delivery. Uh, if you wanna know what one I use then drop me a message down below and I, I can show you. Um, but like I said, if you want me to do a full breakdown of everything, including brands, where I've got it all and things like that, then let me know and I can do a, a full long uh, detail video of all of that but yeah this one I needed to get even longer because I wanted to make this bit a little bit more beefy so I think this was six mil I ended up adding like another two mil so it's now like eight mil so it's just that little bit thicker just because I want this to be structured I mean this is solid I have tried to, to break well not break it but I've put it under a lot of tension just because I'd rather stress test it now rather than put it all on the camera and then risk it falling apart these ones I've got on the camera at the minute are probably holding on with the skin of their teeth so yeah so with this one um, there's a little bit of cleanup I need to do I do want to drill these holes out a little bit on the top and bottom they are both the same size because all these bolts that the, the camera uses they're all universal thread um, I think they're uh, oh, off the top of my head I think they're quarter inch uh, 20 UNC thread I think that's what it is I'm not, like I said, I'm not a camera guy I'm not 100% sure but yeah I think that's what they are so I've got a drill bit and I've made it slightly bigger than this. Uh, when I was designing these holes, I made them just big enough for this uh, bolt size to go through, screw thread to go through. But obviously when you do printing plastic, it, it does expand slightly. So I did make this hole probably like 0.4, not even that, probably like 0.2, not probably even less than that. Basically a micrometer, millimeter, just a little bit too tight. So it means this screw thread starts cutting into this and it starts to force these layers apart. And then I was getting cracking. Um, you can kind of see here where, if the camera focuses, it didn't really pin print properly on here, but there's like cracks in there. Um, and it did, uh, you can see there on this side, if the camera wants to focus on that. So yeah, there you can see there's that crack. So when I screwed this in, it literally forced these layers apart and made that crack and I don't want that. I want this bolt basically to flow through here freely. So all I'm gonna do is with a drill, I'm just gonna slowly ring these out. Um, I'm gonna apologize now if you're wearing headphones because I'm using a drill, so you might wanna turn it down for this next bit just cause this drill is quite loud. So I'm gonna quickly drill this out and this out. Hopefully it doesn't take too much out, um, but yeah, it should be fine. So what I'm doing is I'm just checking uh, just to make sure it's not gone through too much that it would have weakened the plastic. And basically I'm just trying to look through the hole to see if I can see the infill, because I didn't print these 100%. I think they're printed at like 25% infill. So this is this is hollow on the inside and it's like a, it's 25% plastic on the inside and then obviously 75% of it is just air. Um, but yeah, I'm just making sure I haven't gone through too much. So I'll just do it again, do the same again on this bottom piece. So hopefully that should now be wide enough so that when I chuck one of these bolts through it, the screw thread shouldn't bite too much and it should almost fall through. Yeah, so I can basically push that through. I mean, it's still got a little, it will still catch a little bit with the thread, um, but that's, that's not an issue. It's basically, it's not forcing the plastic out, which is what I didn't want basically to make it crack. So now I've done that, all I've got to do is a little bit of clean up. So I'm just gonna take my Gerber that I've got, a little multi-tool. And all I'm gonna do is there's like some rough edges just where, where I printed this fairly quickly. I weren't really looking for uh, a really nice detailed print on this because it, it's a working piece. It's not gonna be part of like the showpiece as it were. It's just there to do a job. So you can see there's like some, some little rough pieces just up in here. So what I'm doing is I'm just gonna take the knife, I'm just gonna gently run that over the top and all that will do is it will literally just knock off any bumps. Try not to take too many gouges out like I just did there. But again, you're not really gonna see that. It's all gonna be hidden underneath the camera, the light and the mic. Uh, just clean this hole out a little bit because there's a little bit of stuff in there, but this isn't actually a, a function hole as it were. It's on the bottom of the uh, camera mount that attaches to the tripod. There's like a little locator pin and um, all I did is I made this little hole on the on the mount there, that little locator pin goes into there. And it just means that this sits completely straight with the mounting bracket. 
so that the ring light's not going to twist on the camera basically it's just like a little piece of security if it was so I'm currently just using the room lights so you can see there are going to you can see the shadows that appear and things like that so the, the quality is not going to be great but I just wanted to give you like a little uh, close-up of of this piece and how the ring light sits on it um, so this is the the bolt that I ordered it's just that standard thread that these cameras use and like I said trying to tighten this up by hand is a nightmare and I've been using a pair of pliers so that's the whole idea of printing this little wing nut piece it's just going to make it a lot easier so this will just slot oh it actually went in there first time I'm happy with that <laughs> this will slot in there like that and then what I'm going to do is I'm just going to super glue that in and then once that's in there that'll make it a lot easier just for tightening up the ring light and things like that now if I do glue this in place um, first thing I want to do is I want to rough up uh, the tip of this bolt just because this is quite a slick smooth surface the super glue is going to have a hard time sort of adhering to this and sticking to this come on camera so yeah all i'm doing is this slick surface on the side of the bolt i don't think the glue will stick to that very well it has got a little hollow bit but again that's not going to be great so what i'm doing is i'm going to take a file and i'm just going to run this little file over the edges score all the edges of that up and then the inside of this is actually all scored up anyway so the glue should be able to stick to this perfectly so i'm just going to scratch this up and then glue it together so I'll make sure I get a good help in the glue in there. I'm not too worried about this sort of over spilling at this point. I'm just going to make sure I get that super glue round on all the surfaces, on all the sides, just so I've got as much contact with the glue and the plastic to the, uh, the bolt head as possible. A lot of this is going to smush out anyway, but um, I'd rather overload this with glue because I know a lot of this is going to sort of seep out. So I want to get as much in there as I can. And then I'm just going to press the bolt in, probably cover myself with glue. Actually, that's not too bad. So I'm going to press that down, make sure I give it a load of pressure. There's not too much glue coming out the sides, which is quite nice. Um, there are some tiny, tiny little gaps around this bolt. So all I'm going to do is with this little piece of spare plastic I've got from 3D printing, I'm literally just going to smooth that glue all the way around. Now I've, I should have got some some super glue accelerator to be honest, just so I can make sure this is perfectly dry. But I'm not too fussed about that to be honest. I know it will dry fairly quick, but I just have to make sure I don't glue this to the actual camera when I put it on. So that's that. That's now going to set. I'm probably going to leave that for a good half hour just because I don't want to risk that glue coming and sticking to the bottom of this mount basically permanently securing it in so I'll, I'll put some good pressure on that I'm going to leave that to set and um, yeah while that's setting we can have a look at how the ring light actually sits on the bracket so as you see the ring lights here you can see it's got the wire that comes out the back um, I've sort of mashed this wire up a little bit from where I've been using it and testing it and things like that. So I needed to make sure I had a groove on the back of this for that to sit in. So it literally just slides in there perfectly. The wire, it's not under any pressure whatsoever. Um, you can see that wire, it actually moves up and down freely and it does move in and out a little bit. So I know that's not under any pressure. And you can see I've got that little raised, I don't know if you are going to see it or not, it's so smart, I've got that little raised lip there, so that just sort of locks the ring light in place, and that will just sit on there perfectly, and then underneath there, we've got the locking, where the locking bolt goes in and screws in. So yeah, it's nice and secure, it actually tilts the, for some reason it's quite weird, I think the ring light, when they've made it, I don't think this bottom bit is actually square, because the ring light actually tilts forward a tiny fraction, um, I don't actually mind that to be honest, it just means that the light is going to be dipped a little bit but other than that it's, it's going to do the job perfectly so that's how that attaches. Now for me to show you the rest um, I'd have to take the camera apart and take the mount off the camera and uh, I don't really want to do that because I can't mount my camera anywhere to show you me doing it um, but you get the whole idea of it basically. Now I forgot to mention this ring light, uh, the, the adapter for it is actually a USB port which is super help i think that's probably one of the best things i've got for this um, you can get a lot of them which have plugs again camera's not going to focus because the light is crap they do come with plugs but i like the fact this comes with a usb because i can pretty much plug this into any spare plug that i've got that has like a usb outlet the other thing i like about it is that if i'm filming somewhere that doesn't have 
uh, power outlet, I can use one of these. So this is one of them uh, power banks. This is a, a Belkin, it's just a, a round one. There's hundreds of these out on the market. Um, and this is actually what I've been using. You can see, you can see, press the button on the side and you see the, the lights come up. That shows you how much battery you've got. And it's got two USB ports. This middle one is for charging the actual battery pack, but you can charge two things at once. And the brilliant thing about this is that I can actually run this light off of this power bank. So once I plug this in, it comes with a little remote. So you can see there, I can turn it on. And it comes on perfectly. And the other thing is it comes with, I don't know if this is the first ring light I've ever bought. I'm gonna turn that off because it's quite bright. This is the first ring light I've ever bought. Um, I was gonna get into like the big professional, big, uh, they're like little mini tents basically that do the lights. And I probably will get one of those at some point, but to be honest, I'm, I might just buy a couple of ring lights and use them as my lighting just cause they're smaller. They don't take up as much room. Um, and I can actually mount these up on walls and things like that. So they're not actually in the way I don't need stands. But on this, it comes with uh, loads of little buttons. So. What these do is these change the tone. So you press this one and it makes it like a really bright, cool white. You press this one and it sort of makes it more of a, it's more of like a, a, a tanned color. Like sort of, I think it's like you can match it to your skin if it makes you look too sort of pale and washed out. Then obviously it's got, this is the brightness. So maximum brightness and all the way down. So if I turn it on, so I'll turn it on to it. I'll wait for the camera to, so I'll turn it to its whitest form. And that's as loud as it goes. Uh, as loud. <laughs> that's as that's as bright as it goes. You can see it's quite bright. And then you can dim it all the way down to there. Then if I, I go through with the tones, it sort of you can see the colour change, and it starts to get a warmer look basically. So you can basically choose what tone you want to, to match your skin, I guess. Um, but yeah, it's really really good. For me, it's super bright. Staring at this for too long does blind me, so I actually knock it down. I sort of have it on about, what's that one, two, oh, I normally have it on like the middle settings, this is like the third, that's the fourth, that's the fifth, that's it, oh sorry, yeah, so I have it sort of on either three or four, depending on how light the room is, and yeah, it's, it's absolutely perfect, and I haven't used this, uh, I'm going to turn this off, I haven't used this battery pack for anything, and I've been using this ring light for a long time now, using this battery pack. And you can see it's it's only gone down one bar, I've still got three bars left and I have used this a lot just for this ring light. So yeah, I think with this, this is quite a big one. So I could carry this around with me, but I'm gonna buy uh, some of the small ones. You can get big ones like this and you can get the little tiny ones. They charge your phone like twice, maybe three times if you're lucky. I'm probably gonna buy two or three of them then I can actually mount this somewhere on the tripod. Uh, roll this cable up so it's nice and tidy and literally I can just take three or four of them out with me plug them in and that's going to be my light if I need it so it's yeah really really handy really happy with this so I'm back to holding the camera so again I haven't got the light on but I thought I will try and show this as best I can because I know there's people that will want to see it so you can see here this is like the little uh, the locking plate I'm trying to get into the lights so you can see it's like angled in different ways and then that sits on the top of this and you can see this little lever here you push that and that basically unlocks it so you can take the camera out so that's how it goes through there and you can see that pin there there's a little locking pin just on the plate there so that's the bit I wanted to use. So that's why I made that hole so when I tighten this up this is very blurry because it's so dark but you can see once that goes through that little locator pin goes into that hole and it just ensures that that sits on there straight. Now, once it's tight, it sits straight, but it does have a little play, just cause that little locator pin there isn't 100%. But yeah, that's basically why I've done it like that. So this little screw is finally dry. I'm happy with that. I've pulled it around and tugged it and everything like that. It's, it's nice and solid. So let me get all this put together, uh, get it all set up, and then we'll jump back onto the iPad so I can give you a little overview of how it all looks. So I wish you could have seen my action when I put it together. It, it just looks the absolute nuts. It's all in black, you can't see any of it. It all blends in the camera and the stand. The little wing nut on the bottom was, oh, it was just like so smooth and it lines up pretty much perfect. Once it's fully tight, the wing nut pretty much sits straight with the ring light. So that makes my OCD so happy. But yeah, I think this looks absolutely incredible. I will get some more footage with the iPad just to go around it so you can see how it all does look. But yeah, it looks absolutely pucker. And this is just the beginning. Um, so eventually I do want to make an actual uh, camera cage for my Canon M50. Um, you can buy them, but with the things that I've got going on, I don't think the cages that I want to buy are going to fit this. 
So I am gonna somehow design and build my own cage that goes around the outside, just so that I can attach new things. So I do wanna extend the battery uh, life on this because it takes these small little batteries, they're tiny, they do last a while, but if you are doing continuous filming, then they don't last, so they are pretty naff. So I either wanna get a, like an external battery pack that you plug in, you can plug into a mains, or just basically a larger battery capacity for that. Um, with the attachment that goes with this tripod, it just doesn't sit on that properly. With the attachment, you have to take the camera off the attachment to open the, the battery pack and get to the uh, SD card, which is quite annoying. So when I 3D print my own little bracket, I'm gonna somehow work my way around that so that I don't need to do that, basically. Uh, hopefully it'll work. Who knows, but I'm sure I'll be able to come up with something. But yeah, there's a few other things I want to get. I want to get um, a bigger screen. So where I'm looking at the little screen on the side of the camera, I can only pretty much see half the screen because where the ring light is, it literally cuts out a little bit of the screen. So I don't know if I'm centered. I think I'm in the middle of the screen, but I won't know until I edit it. So I want to get a little separate screen, which will probably go above it or just to the side where the, uh, the microphone is. And that way I'll be able to see everything that's in focus and it won't be as small on that tiny little screen. Uh, and then there's just a few other little bits that I want to add to it, like where the battery pack for the ring light. I can add it to the tripod, but it's just going to be a bit cumbersome. So I might maybe make something that comes off of the cage for the camera and sits on the side, something like that, I don't know. Um, but yeah, there's loads of things I want to do for this, loads of little adjustments I want to make, so hopefully I can put something together. But if you do like this video, let me know. I know there's a lot of people that are quite techy out there and they like these sort of gadget videos and things like that. So yeah, if you want to see any more of it, let me know and I'll, I'll do my best to try and get some more done. Um, I do need to sort the cable management out because at the minute the microphone cable is like this at the back and it's really annoying me because it's not neat. But that's something that I can look at in the future. But yeah, that's a, a little dive into my little camera setup, how I've got everything going. Um, now I've got this, as I've said, I can do so much more filming. Um, custom racks are coming, custom tubs like these. I don't know if you can see that on camera, mate. you can't uh, quite show these. If you know my snakes, you know I've got these little custom tubs. So these are what I use. So I've got them. My you can actually, I think you can see it just here. So this is my incubator. I've been banging on about this incubator for so long. I've had so many issues trying to get this done. Um, main part is I wanted to put a big door on this because of the size of it, the doors wouldn't work. It'd be an absolute nightmare. So I'm actually gonna have sliding glass on this. So I need to 3D print some runners. Um, I need to sort out this insulation. So that's all hidden. I'm gonna put like some plastic on the inside and it's all gonna be black and I still got to work out shell. So this build is coming, I am sort of filming it kind of as I go along. It's not really gonna be like a, a DIY thing. It's just gonna be, this is how I made it, if that makes sense. So yeah, this is gonna be coming soon. I've got a lot of snakes pairing up. So there's gonna be hopefully some egg uh, collecting videos coming soon, which is gonna be really exciting. I, I want eggs so bad, especially with my new setup now. I think it's gonna make my egg cones a lot, lot better. I'm just seeing to make sure I'm in focus, but I think I am. Um, and also I've got the big saltwater pond, which is over here, you can sort of see in the background, this corner piece here. This has come along, it's full of water, it's cycling. Um, I do have a few fish in here already, just to sort of help that cycle. Um, I'll be doing filtration on this within the next month. In a minute, it's just got like a little canister filter attached to it. There's no real bio gun on here, so it, it should be able to cope with that. Um, but yeah, all the filtration is gonna be out through that wall, so that's kind of soon. And then once that's all done, I can start decorating the room, getting the room looking nice. And yes, yeah, it's, it's a lot of work. I do work full time as well. So trying to get all this done as well as my main job is, it is hard, but I'm slowly, slowly getting there. So thank you for watching this video. I think it's going to be a little bit long, but again, it's one of those things just updating. And uh, yeah, so thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it and I'll see you in the next one.